You play to win the game. Hello? You play to win the game. You don't play to just play it. That's the great thing about sports. You play to win. And I don't care if you don't have any wins. You go play to win. When you start telling me it doesn't matter, then retire. Get out. Because it matters. What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope everybody's had a great uh, Taco Tuesday and that all your taco dreams have come true. Uh, just a little bit of a note here, and this is going to be interesting because we do have 16 free agents on the roster, and if I can never get up with my buddy Game Time Brian, we'll play Should I Stay or Should I Go? Talking about all of our free agents that we have. And one of those is Tony Pollard. Um, you know, we get it, we're getting all excited about the possibility of Derrick Henry is out there, that Josh Jacobs could be out there, Saquon Barkley could be out there. But Micah Parsons, now here's what's interesting is Micah Parsons is auditioning for GM. I don't know if you guys realize this, but Micah Parsons is he's communicating with the owner about the type of players that they want he wants to see on the team, about players that need to come back and so on. He is becoming the GM. And one of the things that he said is he believes that Tony Pollard should get another chance. That Tony Pollard was a coming back from injury and um you know with the broken leg so he couldn't get in a lot of time in uh OTAs and in training camp and stuff and was basically rehabbing through the season. And we've seen that happen of course with uh Terrence Steele. We've seen that happen with Michael Gallup and you know we do know that that is a thing that you know guys having to come back from injury that it does take time to recover and he pointed out that Tony Pollard was playing better at the end of the year than he was starting the year well the interesting thing is there there is some to that and going through the numbers the first eight games of the season Tony Pollard averaged 3.9 yards a carry the last nine games of the year, it was 4.1. Averaged out to four yards a carry for the season. Now, here's where, you know, sometimes, uh, this is where I'm kind of on the fence now. Sometimes you, when you think about somebody else's player, see, here's the problem for Cowboys players. Cowboys players are shown to the nth degree because everybody wants to see the Cowboys. You don't see the Jets players in the same way you see the Cowboys. You don't see even the Giants or, hell, for that matter, you basically see the highlights for San Francisco's players. You don't necessarily see all of the bad plays and negative plays and things like that. So you get shaded somewhat in your perspective of Cowboy players versus other ones. Because in your mind, what you see when you see Saquon, if I said to you, you could have Saquon or Tony Pollard, instantly you would say, oh, I'll take Saquon Barkley, right? There's no question in that. Well, actually, there could be a question in that. Because when you think about Saquon, let me pull up his stats real quick. The problem with Saquon is, in his years of playing, is he's had injuries. There's a, a lot of injuries in his career. He's not like a Zeke Elliott that is a workhorse. Okay, 2018, he had 16 games. 2019, 13 games. 2020, two games. 2021, 13. Um, uh, 2022, 16, and 2023, 14. Okay, so it's not quite as bad as I thought it was. But here's where it's kind of interesting is, believe it or not, the numbers for Saquon and Tony Pollard are almost identical. Let me blow that up a little bit for you. Let, let's look at this. So, Saquon played 14 games. Tony Pollard played 17. Um, rushing yards, 
Saquon carried the ball more per game because he played in less games. But Tony Pollard carried the ball five times more. And you can see with the rush yards, the rush yards are almost identical. Saquon is 3.9 yards. Tony Pollard's four yards. Now, I will say that because the Cowboys had more of a passing threat, that that does make it easier for Tony Pollard, or it should. And I will also say that they weren't exactly using Tony Pollard to the best of his abilities. He is not a short yardage guy. You need a bruising type running back. But I'm not sure that you want to take Saquon and have him being in every down between the tackles guys. Receptions wise is the only stat that you look at and see that Saquon was better, but it's only by a yard in passing receiving catches. Um, and uh, receiving touchdowns. He's got four versus none for Tony Pollard. But again, Tony Pollard is a different type of back. So when you look at these numbers, you don't see a major difference. And I will say, look, truth in advertising, don't don't call me an idiot. Um, Saquon is a more dynamic back and has done more things than Tony Pollard has done. He has. There's no if, ands, or buts about it. But that was the past the question is, what is the future? Now, Saquon was franchise tagged as well last year, but I'm not going to say that the two of those contracts or perceptions will be the same. He's going to be looking for $12, $14 million again, but that market is not there. I, I don't think, I, I'll be honest, If I'd be surprised if running backs not named Christian McCaffrey go over $10 million. As crazy as that sounds, I honestly believe that actually Tony Pollard's number may be more like a Miles Sanders type of a number that he got last year. He got four years, $25 million. And I would say that that's the kind of money that you're looking at paying a Tony Pollard. But there's going to be a lot of backs that are on the market that you can look at. And, you know, you may want to try and say, hey, we want to get a home run hitter. If you were asking me if all things were equal, if you're saying, that it's six or seven million dollars is the amount of money that I have to spend on a running back, and I could get one of three guys: Tony Pollard, Derrick Henry, or Saquon Barkley. I'm taking Derrick Henry. I need a between the tackle guy that if I need a yard, he's going to be able to. I need a big back that's a bruiser. Now, in a perfect world, in a perfect world. If I can go ahead and t bring back Tony Pollard and get Derrick Henry, and I think there's a possibility that, you know, sometimes as a player, you can see like when DeMarco Murray left the Cowboys to go play for the Eagles for more money, that maybe he regretted that and saying, you know, I might have been happier in Dallas. So we have to see what his comfort level is and what he sees out there on the market. But, you know, as crazy as it is, last year's devaluing of running backs, where they literally just did not pay any of them, but then when you get to the playoffs, you see the value of running backs. The problem with the running back is, is when you have one great running back and you're paying the lion's share of the money to one guy, if he cannot hold up, that's where you have problems. And that's where all of a sudden things change and you're, you're, you're screwed because you put all your eggs in that one basket. So it's going to be an interesting dynamic to see what the Cowboys are going to do. But clearly, the Cowboys have to do something because Rico and Tony Pollard are both free agents. So at the moment, you know, all we have is Vaughn. Yeah, that's all we have right now. So, Cowboys need to get this thing figured out and um, figure it out sooner than later. All right, good people. We'll see. Micah Parsons, de facto GM. Peace.